By the turn of the new millennium, Disney had established themselves as the biggest entertainment company in the world. They had taken over every aspect of media you can think of from their theme parks to their cruise lines, merchandise, films, and more. Speaking of films, they revolutionized the animation industry with their animated films over the decades. The 90s was probably their most popular time for movies, which we all know as the Disney Renaissance. During this time, the company released many iconic films that saw massive massive box office success including Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, The Little Mermaid, and Aladdin, amongst many others. Even though these films were very successful, the animation landscape was rapidly changing throughout the decade. Newer studios like Pixar and DreamWorks were really shaking up the industry with their 3D films. Films like Toy Story, Shrek, Monsters Inc., and Finding Nemo all saw massive success around this time. And people really liked this new style of animation and Disney noticed they had to really catch up with this trend because 3D was quickly taking over and 2D was fading away. Throughout the 2000s, Disney would continue to release more successful films, well, not as successful or memorable as the previous decade. This decade would be called the post-Disney Renaissance era. During this time, Disney released a total of 11 animated films between the years 2000 and 2008. Some of these films would use traditional 2D animation while others were completely 3D. With all of the new competition, Disney went for a different approach when making their films. They ditched their classic fairy tale, princess, and whimsical storytelling for films that had more of an edge and realism to them. They also didn't have any musicals during this decade, which is really interesting, actually. The post-Renaissance era films would range in a wide variety of genres, including action-adventure, buddy comedies, sci-fi flicks, and more. This was definitely Disney's most experimental era of films, in my opinion, as every movie was just so unique and different from what they've done before in the past. The competition of other studios really gave them a reason to step their game up. I wanted to make a video ranking each of these films to see which ones were the worst and which ones were the best from this forgotten and somewhat overlooked era of Disney films. For this list though, I didn't want to include Fantasia 2000 because that's more of a compilation of animated clips rather than a full length movie in my opinion. Coming in at the bottom spot is Chicken Little. This was a movie that I really loved as a kid but grew to dislike it over the years. I guess I liked it as a kid because I liked many things I watched just because. This movie was just a big sloppy mess in my opinion. So to me the characters are just very unlikable, unfunny, and just not memorable. Chicken Little's dad actually has to be the worst character as he spends a good chunk of the film just being embarrassed of his son as well as not being there for him when he wanted to try out for the baseball team. Like, what kind of father figure is he? A lot of the other characters just felt very mean-spirited throughout this movie's runtime, which made it very difficult to watch. This movie feels like it doesn't know what it wants to be at times. It starts off as what seems to be a simple baseball movie and then turns into this bizarre alien invasion film during the second half. Yeah, I really don't know what they were doing with that. And I know that this movie came out way back in 2005, but the animation here just looks and feels very cheap and bland compared to their other animated films from this time. Another thing about this film that I noticed is that it just has a lot of random pop culture references and pop songs that just feel so out of place and forced to me. These are the types of things you'd expect from a DreamWorks film, just not a Disney movie. Yeah, the pop culture references just make it feel so dated. I don't know, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen as I do find some moments and characters entertaining. It's just not great or memorable. So this was a movie that I completely forgot about until making this list. This is definitely one of Disney's most forgotten films and biggest flops of all time. I want to say I've seen it once many years ago when I was a little kid and didn't really care for it back then. Besides this being a pretty bad and forgettable movie, I do appreciate and see the vision of what Disney was trying to do with this one. I mean, they really tried something new with this being Disney's first full-length 3D film with some photorealistic backgrounds. For that reason, the movie in a way was ahead of its time, which makes it commendable and unique for trying something new, but the animation and the character designs just look really ugly. I mean, I understand that this film was released way back in the year 2000, and it definitely shows. The animation just hasn't aged well and looks really bad, especially when you compare it to other 3D films from this era. Another reason why I think this movie is one of Disney's worst from this era is that it's just so boring and slow-paced. The movie is just super bland and feels like 
filler most of the time. It's just a forgettable movie with ugly animation, bland storytelling, and forgettable characters. It's definitely one of Disney's worst films they've ever produced in my opinion. It's not a movie that I would want to watch again because it's just so ugly and just so boring and bad and forgettable. But on a good note, I do enjoy the ride at Animal Kingdom, just not the movie. I'm actually really surprised that Disney didn't make a Western animated film earlier. Maybe they did and I just don't know, but that's besides the point. So Home on the Range is a movie that I actually never really saw as a kid until making this list. I actually vaguely remember it as a child and felt like it was more of a fever dream. To me, I always felt like this movie was just lost in the shuffle of other great animated films from the year 2004, like the Spongebob movie, Shrek 2, and The Incredibles, and so many other animated movies came out this year. I honestly just forgot about Home on the Range. Speaking of, I actually remember my dad giving me this movie on DVD as a birthday gift, but I ended up switching it for The Incredibles because I was way more interested in that film as a kid than this. Yeah, Home on the Range was just a movie that I was never interested in growing up. As an adult, re-watching it for the first time, I just wasn't super impressed. The story was okay with some decent characters, just an overall forgettable experience. It's just one of those movies that you watch out of boredom and not because you actually want to watch it for fun, if that makes sense. I also feel like this movie was just not promoted enough compared to some of their other films from this decade. Overall, this was a pretty underwhelming and forgettable film. I don't hate it completely, just find it to be an eh movie. This is a movie that I wanted to like as a kid, but just couldn't really get into it for some reason. This movie literally feels like a retread of what we saw with Toy Story. It's literally a copy and paste version of that movie, which is obviously better. Bolt thinks he's the actual super dog from the TV show, just like Buzz thought he was the actual space ranger from the show. He later goes on this self-discovery adventure where he learns that he's just a regular dog that stars in a TV show. Similar to when Buzz found out that he was actually just a toy, not the real space ranger. Ranger. The plot could have worked, it just falls flat in my opinion. I also can't stand the two side characters as I found them to just be unbearable and just super annoying and unlikable. The voice acting is pretty decent with John Travolta as Bolt and the young Miley Cyrus as Penny. Speaking of, I always felt like she was casted in this film just to get kids to harass their parents to go see the movie because Hannah Montana was in it. And it definitely worked because I was one of those kids low key, but that's besides the point. Yeah, I don't really have much to say say about Bolt because I just really find this movie to be... What was that? It's not the worst movie I've ever seen, it's just a whatever film that I just don't really care about. I always felt like Disney was trying to make another Tarzan with this film. They even got Phil Collins to come back and produce the soundtrack. It's definitely not Tarzan, but a pretty decent film for what it is. I rewatched Brother Bear during the pandemic, and I completely forgot about this movie, if I'm being honest. And I actually enjoy Brother Bear, I just don't think it's the best from this era or what Disney has to offer in general. I actually really enjoyed the animation alongside the Alaskan setting. It was nice to see this part of the world depicted in animation. I also really like the chemistry between the two main characters, Kina and Koda, and the Moose characters are honestly the funniest and the best parts of the movie. Even though they get annoying here and there, I just found them to be so funny and interesting. I literally just laugh so hard whenever these two pop up on the screen. I honestly wouldn't mind if they had their own short or something like that on Disney+. Plus. Everything else about this movie is just pretty boring and forgettable in my opinion. To me, it just feels like a pretty generic buddy comedy film that just lacks some good story elements elements and felt a bit predictable at times. I also feel like the overall story was fine, just the pacing felt super slow, which made it a drag to get through most of the film. This movie also feels super short compared to the other ones on this list with an 85 minute runtime. Overall, I do enjoy Brother Bear as a film, I just feel like it was missing something in the story to just make it a little better. This was another movie that I completely forgot existed. It wasn't a film that I watched as often as others on this list, but I do have some vivid memories of it. I actually remember having the morph toy from a McDonald's Happy Meal as a kid. I don't know, just a random memory. So Treasure Planet is definitely one of the most bizarre and creative Disney films to ever be made. From start to finish, it's just so fun and exciting despite it being a forgotten film. The movie definitely stands out as one of the most visually stunning animated films I've ever seen 
seen in my life. I really enjoyed the intricate character designs as well as the blending of 2D and 3D animation. I also really loved the futuristic, sci-fi, steampunk aesthetic this movie has. Despite how visually stunning this film is, it actually was a box office failure, making it one of Disney's most forgotten films, unfortunately. The movie was released around the same time as more popular films like the Harry Potter sequel and the Santa Claus 2 movie. I honestly really don't know why Disney released this film around this time because it definitely got overshadowed by more popular films, but I digress. On a good note, the movie did end up getting an Oscar nomination the following year, so that's pretty cool. If I'm being honest, this is nowhere near my favorite Disney animated film, but it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie to watch every once in a while or when I feel like being nostalgic. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. I've always kind of had a soft spot for Meet the Robinsons. I know a lot of people don't really like this movie and think that it's terrible. And to me, I feel like people only say that because it's just not as popular as some of the other movies on this list. Regardless of how people view the film, I think it's a really good movie and has a lot of depth and fun moments here and there. I just love how warm and easygoing this film is. I also really love that this movie plays around with elements of time travel. You can't go wrong with time travel movies. This movie also does a really good job at portraying themes of family, trust, friendship, and just moving forward. I also really love how inspirational this movie is from start to finish. The dynamic between Lewis and Wilbur is honestly one of my favorites from any Disney film. They complement each other very well as we later find out that Lewis is actually his father and was brought to the future by Wilbur to show him what his future was going to look like. Sensational. My biggest problem with this film is that at times it just feels way too crowded with way too many characters characters in the Robinson family, as well as the animation. To me, the animation isn't bad, but it's just not great. It definitely looks dated and a bit wonky at times. I do find the jokes hilarious, especially the bowler hat guy who's an underrated Disney villain. Overall, Meet the Robinsons is a great feel-good film that I revisit so often every once in a while. Now onto the top three. Coming in at third place is The Emperor's New Groove. This has to be one of the funniest Disney movies to ever exist. I've always liked it as a kid and still quote it regularly to this, to this day. day. Like I said earlier, this is definitely one of the funniest Disney films I've ever seen. The animation is beautiful, the South American setting is just wonderful, and the characters are just iconic, which makes this one of the most memorable cast in any Disney movie in my opinion. I know Cusco was written as an unlikable character in the beginning, but you grow to like him as he has a great change of heart after being turned into a llama for most of the movie's runtime. He goes from being this egotistical, shallow, spoiled, selfish jerk to a well-rounded and likable character in the end. And to me, that's just great character development, unlike Peter Pan who stays the same throughout the whole movie. I also really loved Yzma and Kronk as they are easily the best characters in this entire movie. Literally every scene these two are in is just so hilarious and iconic. Literally every scene these two are in are just so hilarious and iconic. Whoever wrote that pull the lever cronk scene really deserves a raise. Just good stuff right there. The voice acting between each character also made this such a great and memorable film. Literally every line that they delivered was just so funny. This movie is just so funny. I can't keep saying that enough. I really love this movie and can say more, but I really want to move on before this video gets too long. This is another movie from this decade that I never saw as a kid until my adulthood, and this movie is just amazing. I'm not gonna lie, I thought I wasn't gonna like it when I first saw it, but I was proven wrong. I don't know how I missed it as a kid, I guess it just didn't look interesting to my little kid eyes, or just I just didn't want to watch it, I don't know. Atlantis is such a great and underrated Disney film. The animation style and color palette they use for this film, as well as the character designs, just look amazing. This is also one of those movies that blends traditional 2D animation with 3D animation, giving the audience just a visceral experience, making it one of the most visually stunning animated films I've ever seen in my life. The characters, setting, and plot feel so real despite this being animation. Speaking of characters, I really love the attention to detail each character in this movie has, whether they're on the expedition, or they're an Atlantis civilian, or just a background character. They all just meshed well together in a way that just feels right. Each character had great 
great dialogue and interactions throughout the film, which also makes this movie just amazing. I also really liked the villain and felt like he was an interesting character with terrible intentions to steal all of Atlantis' resources for wealth and his own selfish personal gain. And man, do I miss the days when Disney had really good villains in their movies. That would actually be a good video idea for another day, but we'll talk about that in another video, so stay tuned for that. The chemistry between Milo and Princess Kira just felt so realistic, making them one of my favorite Disney couples ever. I really loved seeing them together in each scene as their relationship just felt very real compared to a lot of other Disney couples. I have no critiques for this film as I think it's a perfect film from start to finish. It really is a shame that this movie is just so underrated and forgotten and overlooked by so many people when it's actually a big masterpiece. I would have ranked this movie as my number one choice, but there's one film from this era that's just better for different reasons. Coming in at first place, we have Lilo and Stitch. This is definitely the best film from this era and one of Disney's greatest achievements in my opinion. This was also one of my favorite movies growing up. Lilo and Stitch actually has a pretty bizarre concept for a film, but works really well. An alien experiment that escapes and ends up on this beautiful island of Hawaii to be taken in by a little girl who has no clue he's an alien until later in the film. Just genius. The animation in this film is just stunning with the use of watercolor backgrounds as well as the unique character designs. I just love that they chose Hawaii as the setting for this film and how they chose to animate the island just looks so beautiful and amazing. One of my favorite scenes is when they are surfing on the ocean and it's just so fun and beautiful and calming. The relationship between Lilo and Nani is also a really big highlight of the film. Being sisters who never really saw eye to eye on things, while Nani was literally trying to keep things together, served as a great form of storytelling throughout the movie. Similar to Atlantis, the characters and story just felt so real in this movie. I also just love Lilo and Stitch's relationship with each other as friends. I just love how despite being treated as an outcast, Lilo still accepts and treats Stitch as a close family member. I really love how this movie tackles very important topics like acceptance, rejection, friendship, and family. The movie just has this easygoing, sunny, wholesome feel to it that I just love. Yeah, Lilo and Stitch is just an amazing movie from start to finish and it's honestly one of Disney's best movies in my opinion. The post-Disney Renaissance was a very unique decade that gave us a wide variety of animated films. Some of these films have gone on to become cult classics amongst fans, while others have faded into obscurity over time. Even though this isn't my favorite or the most popular Disney decade, I do appreciate the risk that were taken with these movies, making them all very different from one another. The post-Disney Renaissance era was definitely an era that may be overlooked and forgotten, but continued to lay the groundwork for what was to come in the next decade for Disney movies. So what was your favorite post-Disney Renaissance movie from this era? Do you agree with my ranking? Do you disagree? What would your top five look like? What would you say are the worst and what would you say are the best? Thank y'all so much for watching this video. I hope y'all had fun. I hope y'all learned something new and I hope you just enjoyed yourself while watching this video. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more fun videos just like this. See ya.